Welcome to the channel. This is the first video of a series of interviews with different wolf dog owners. Um, I'm going to be diving into some of the unique aspects of wolf dog ownership, as well as share some of the different principles and philosophies of wolf dog owners. In this interview, Angie and I cover quite a bit of ground. Um, we talk about how she got involved with the sanctuary as well as wolf dogs. Uh, we talk a little bit about what are some of the things that surprised her about wolf dog ownership, as well as some of the challenges that she went through. Um, we do go a little bit off plan and talk about wolves in the wild and why they need more people to advocate for them. We discuss how wolf dogs have an incredible ability to reflect back on us who we really are and what we are going through. And then we finish off with a very emotional and sobering ending where we discuss the harsh realities of losing our wolf dogs that we love so dearly. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy this interview and make sure you subscribe and like this video. So Angie, it's nice to have you here and it's nice to see you again. Yes, you too. Yeah. Um, so I want you to kind of tell people a little bit about yourself and kind of how you and I know each other and whatnot. So I'm going to let you take it away. Okay. I'll try to summarize. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was at the sanctuary for about six years and um, just left in February kind of pursuing some personal goals and before that, I was an intern for three years, yeah. <laughs> and then I came on as part-time staff. I kind of evolved into full-time staff, and so I've known all these animals for a long time yeah. and um, made incredible bonds with many of them and absolutely no bonds with others. Yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> that is the nature. Yeah. Well, and I figured that you would be literally the perfect person to do our first kind of wolf dog interview with just because not only do I know how much experience you have with the wolf dogs, but then you also adopted one of our senior wolf dogs mm -hmm. and took him home to to actually yes. live with him and yeah. kind of experience that ownership side of things as well, right? Yes. So, so I think that's going to be kind of, yeah, like a really valuable story to be able to share yeah. for people and whatnot. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that kind of covers a little bit about a brief introduction, some of your experience with wolf dogs. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I am always really curious to find out is how people really even first got to know about wolf dogs and how did you learn that mm -hmm. wolf dogs even exist? So <laughs> right. kind of tell me about that. Yeah, well, before I started at the sanctuary, um, I had an actual career <laughs> and then got kind of swept up in rescue and I did a weekly shift at Cochrane Humane and I had been there for maybe well back then six months at the time yeah and I came in for my shift and one of the staff said hey did you go take a look at the wolf dog and I didn't I'd been in rescue for five years at that time and I had never even heard of wolf dogs they weren't even on my radar at all somehow right yeah. and um I went back and saw him and was just blown away and he ended up coming here it was I don't know if I'm allowed to mention yeah <laughs> Trig. and we didn't know his name at the time yeah. and he was just the most gorgeous creature I had ever seen he was so big and the first thing I noticed was there was this mystery around him. How do we act around him? What yeah. do we do? Is he going to try to attack us? Like there was all of this kind of narrative around him. Yeah. And I found it really interesting. And I, number one, couldn't believe that wolf dogs existed. <laughs> yeah. But um, someone said, hey, you should go to Yamaska. They have like a sanctuary. And so I ended up booking a tour, looked into it, and I'm like, I got to find out about these animals. And that's how I came here. And you happen to be hiring interns at the time. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It was like so long ago, like 2015. Yeah, that was a while ago. 2016. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so just for, I guess, everybody to know that Trig <laughs> was a wolf dog that was an escape artist mm -hmm. and ended up being picked up by Animal Control, ended up at Cochrane Humane Society. Cochrane Humane Society transferred him to us here. Mm -hmm. And then when we posted him up for adoption, his owner found out that Trig was here oh. and then came and basically 
re-adopt a trig on the condition that he was going to build proper containment mm -hmm. and not let trig be a runner anymore. So and he never came back. And he never came back. So that's yeah. that's Six great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and incidentally, he was lovely. He was. Yeah. Yeah. As mm -hmm. far as wolf dogs go, he was definitely an easier one. Yeah. That like typical wolf dogs escape our runner, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. Yeah. All right. So kind of my next question for you here. Um, what is one thing about wolf dogs or wolf dog ownership in general that totally surprised you in a good way? <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> well, that I guess that it's the the payoff, like I wouldn't even call it a payoff because that cheapens it, you yeah. know? Um, the, re the return. Re 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 reward or return yeah. on an effort. But that I think is what surprised me the most, that okay. they, the bonds that they are capable of forming yeah. uh, with a human that they feel a connection to. And I think that's what people don't realize. Like I do hear it all the time and it might be kind of like merging into other questions, but I would hear it all the time that, you know, you can own a piece of the wild and right. ride a wolf dog. Yeah. <laughs> wild and, and pets don't go hand in exactly. hand. And yeah. I think that that was the biggest pleasant surprise is that they are really good friends if they, yep. if they feel that with you and that's what makes them so special. I think because yeah. you know, if an, if one of them feels a connection to you and, um, wants to spend time with you, chooses to spend time near it's you. It's a gift and it is a gift you accept with gratitude. Indeed. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> no, that's great. And honestly, like when you were kind of saying that, like it literally gave me chills because that's for me, like one of the, yeah, those core things as well. It's like, these are animals that, naturally don't really want to make those connections. And so when you really take the time to understand them and kind of meet them halfway and put in the effort to build that trust and respect and, mm -hmm. and when they choose to give that love back to you, I mean, that's a huge moment. So it really is. Yeah. And it could take a week and it Kuna. couldn't or yeah. <laughs> well it wasn't a week it was, we went through our turmoil let me tell you yeah, but I guess for you when you, you met Kuna, that all up yeah yeah for us yeah, yeah that's true <laughs> yeah but like some it's years yeah. and years and years and, and some, some it's, never. it's never yeah mm -hmm. no that's true Okay. No, yeah. that's, that's a great answer. <laughs> All right. What else do I have here for you? Um, well, I think this one I have to ask obviously, but what was your biggest challenge living with or working with the wolf dogs? <laughs> and well, I know there's many, so just like, <laughs> there's so many, yeah. um, pretty much everything right. it can be a challenge from one day <laughs> to the yeah. next, right? Some days you can change the water pail no problem some days they have an issue with it and you know yeah. other days they don't care and uh, little things like that can be um can be issues I think but living with I was just gonna Rocky. ask you right because you adopted yeah. Rocky a senior mm -hmm. wolf dog here that you fell in love with while you were working yes. here and, and so you really had the chance to take a wolf dog home with you and so just from yeah that ownership standpoint what was the biggest challenge there it the frustration like and my like my situation with Rocky was nowhere near the challenge that most owners face. Like I recognize that I had six years to build a relationship with him here in yeah. this comfortable setting that, um, quite frankly, all the pressure of ownership wasn't on me. When right. I adopted him, he'd had sleepovers at my house for numerous years. Yeah. He'd been to my house quite, quite a bit. Yeah. And I still had this panic of being responsible for right. a wolf dog. I really did. Yeah. And I was kind of scared. <laughs> like, okay, he's totally my responsibility now. Like right. it's different from a regular dog. I've had, uh, so many dogs. I couldn't even count them in my home as like my own animal and, um, fosters and palliative care, uh, animals. Yes. And I've had so many, but it just felt so different. And 
even though we had this, what I think was a great relationship, I, we trusted each other a hundred percent both ways. Yeah. I mean, I saw firsthand you were his person, you <laughs> yes. know, like he bonded to you. You I were his person first. and he was my, he was my choice and then yes. he warmed up to it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I think there was never any doubt in either of our minds. Right. It's just, he, he, had a, a rough life before yeah. he came and I've confirmed that with people that knew him before he even came to the sanctuary. Yeah. He was, um, he was quite the animal yeah. and pretty much the furthest thing from social. Yeah. Um, I think initially, and he had a pretty rough start to life yeah. and was in very, um, poor health also yeah. when, uh, he, ended up at CHS and finally came here and he needed that decompression time. Of course, dogs, <laughs> the, that's the answer. It's not yeah. us people. Humans are so arrogant and entitled. <laughs> I see that a lot with wolf dog ownership, yeah. <laughs> um, that I'm going to make this my animal. I'm going to dominate this. And you see the same with, um, government agencies with wolves, right? Um, People fear them, I think, because they're so similar to us, yeah. is my opinion. Well, yeah, <laughs> and I find that, like, when we're dealing with wolf dogs and even wolves in the wild, for some reason, just ego kicks in so much. Mm -hmm. And I think for wolves in the wild, you know, they wolves are such an amazing, epic carnivore that I think a lot of people still have this thing where they feel like they need to control it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then for mm -hmm. wolf dog ownership, well, it's kind of that exotic pet trade. Right. Yeah. And like, look at my, you know, pet wolf basically. And so animal, yeah. it attracts just so many people that are driven by ego. And yeah. I think we know that those ones are the ones that usually just don't work out. Yeah. It's, Cause it's not, and cause it's not a relationship on trust and respect. It's a relationship of, basically this is my commodity. Yeah, exactly. And I think that you, you see that, um, both ends of the spectrum, right? Like people that are, know what they're doing, know what they're in for and are ready and build amazing bonds with Rocky was like a low content. He wasn't, he was close to 50%, but technically not. And he was a challenging animal, yeah. we all know, um, yeah. at certain times and yeah. in certain situations that he did get better, um, with, with trust eventually. But in like, in my house, he, I think that people don't realize that you don't make the decisions a lot. Like that might sound bad. I don't mean it to sound like you can't train them or no, have I'm, compliance at times. Like yeah. I'm not saying that I know high content owners out there that have beautiful relationships and these social animals that can go to events. Like that's amazing, but that is the minority in yes, my opinion. It is. Those it's are the, the ones that you see not the rule. and you think yeah. that that's, Oh, well that's how all wolf dogs are. Yeah. yeah that is a beautiful thing, yeah. but that's not how it goes with every animal. Every animal is an individual. Yeah. And, um, I think it can be, there can be very different end results depending on the animal and the person. Yeah. Same. We saw it here all the time. Oh, yeah. I would try, try, try to be friends with certain animals. I won't even name him Grizz. <laughs> and we came to a kind of an agreement yeah. that I won't bother you. You won't bother me. Exactly. We will coexist. Yes. Yeah. But then there's <laughs> other humans that Grizz absolutely he adores loves. and yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's a no brainer. Like exactly. Joel, he yeah. loves. Exactly. But in the house, it's a different story. Like Rocky wouldn't do what I wanted because I wanted him to most of the time he would, but it seems like when I really needed him to, he wouldn't. Right. Um, things, I think that he was just really impatient and it's a combination of his age. He was obviously at my home for the last months of his life. He yeah. ended up being with us for six months and, um, 
it was just kind of a patience thing with him. Like, um, I had to be super patient with him, but he didn't have to be patient with me at all. <laughs> well, I'm sure in his mind, he was being <laughs> he patient with five you. Five seconds is yeah. his patience level. Exactly. And like, things like muzzle punching. Yeah. I need to go outside and he would muzzle punch. Yeah. There may or may not be incisors in there <laughs> with <laughs> other members of the family. It was incisors with me. It was just a really hard punch usually. Yeah. And then his, um, nerve shattering bark would fall uh, yes, and indeed. that you were never expecting, yeah. even though you should. And he would warn me if I was in the middle of something and he wanted outside and I didn't yeah. go the first time. He would just look right at me and pee. It, oh, wherever. yeah. <laughs> Things yeah. like that. Well, like, and I think she, like people don't realize just when you have a wolf dog in the house of really, in my opinion, any wolf content, it's constant management, mm -hmm. right? Like it's constant supervision management. Like you don't really get that many moments where they just truly relax. And, and, and even yeah. when they're asleep, you always kind of have to have one ear open because yeah. they'll wake up and yeah. Yeah. So. And even him, like he was thankfully beyond his destructive phase. He was an old man. Yeah. And I think it's worth noting that even though he was very comfortable in my house, very comfortable with my dogs, I even had a foster dog, a foster puppy at the time that yeah. he tolerated. And even though that was the case when he first came home and even to the very end, he paced yeah. and paced yeah. and paced. Yeah. And that was just something we accepted. And if he laid down for 20 minutes, it's like, yeah, yeah. you enjoy those and 20 minutes. Then all of a sudden it would start over yeah. again. And that was a place where he was old. He didn't have tons of energy and in yeah. a place where with a human he trusted, like, yeah, that's a pretty best case scenario. And yeah. still and he would pace and pace and pace. The only thing I gave him, I think some comfort, but it was my biggest dog was what gave him that comfort and right. that security. Yeah. And I think that's, it. I don't think it was really me. I think it was my big dog that, uh, Hefley that, that allowed him to feel really comfortable. Right. And that's with Hefley, right? Exactly. Like he still was yeah. pacing and yeah. peeing. And <laughs> I think that, <laughs> I think it may be, I told myself it was incontinence, but <laughs> I think he was just like, I said, let me out. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's enough about challenges. Let's get some of the, you know, get onto some of the maybe just different aspects of wolf dog knowledge and ownership and whatnot. So, um, I threw this question in here because I think this is one of those ones where we just hear so many things that it's so nice to share sometimes, <laughs> but, um, what are some bad recommendations or bad advice <laughs> that you hear often about wolf dog ownership? Um, I, there's so many things that just strike me yeah. as incorrect. <laughs> okay. So give me one. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's hard to, for me, it's hard to put my finger kind of okay. on it, but you know, I think the thing that irritates me the most, and I will say irritate me is I see wolf dogs for sale and people buying these high content animals and saying it's all in the socialization and right. kind of insinuating, like if you socialize them properly, which most people don't even know what that looks like yeah. appropriately. Um, if you socialize them, then you'll have this amazing animal at the end. Yeah. And there is no guarantee of that no. happening. Um, no. Well, and it's one of those that things is, where it's not nature versus nurture, it's nature and nurture. It's a combination yeah. of genetics as well as the experiences that that wolf dog has. Yeah. And you can, you know, raise a wolf dog in the most perfect manner. But if genetically speaking, they're inclined to be fearful of something, mm -hmm. all the socialization in the world isn't going to get rid of that. Yeah. You know, you can minimize it perhaps, but it's going to always be there. Yeah. So. And it might always be a challenge. I think that's the thing that bothers me is you can, is you can 
mold that animal into anything you want yeah. kind of idea yeah, and we know that is not, not my experience. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Just as I want to share one of mine because like, it's just one of those things that I want to share lots of these so that people don't fall for them that you know when people say like oh wolf dogs make good farm dogs or something like that or right guard dogs or good guard dogs like that kind of stuff so yeah, yeah not the case no. um all right so now on the flip side of things what are some words of advice you would give someone thinking about getting their first wolf dog and what advice should they ignore right um Depending, I guess, what your end goal is, I've had these conversations quite a bit in like the last six years. And yeah. I think that the best advice is volunteer, volunteer with wolf dogs and, and, or kind of reach out to wolf dog owners follow reputable <laughs> Facebook pages yeah. where you're getting information from experienced good owners that yeah. know what they're talking about and haven't had wolf dogs for two years, have had wolf dogs for yeah. a long time and know what they're talking about. And if someone insists on getting a high content, meet the parents. It's kind yeah. of like dogs, but a yeah. whole different level. Yeah. Well, and, and meet more than one high content because yeah. as we've already discussed in this conversation, you might have met that exceptional high content wolf dog that can walk down the street that can do those things. But for yeah. every one of those exceptional wolf dogs yeah. that can do it, there's probably nine or 10 more that can't. Mm -hmm. And so don't base all your judgments exactly. about what a high content wolf dog behaves like from one animal that you've yeah. met and get experience. I've, I think that for me and like all the research and reading that I've done, the female, the mother influences so much okay. of their um, fight or flight right. there because it's a Which direct makes, correlation. Yeah. And so if you have a social, rather social female mother, yeah. um, your chances of at least some of those offspring kind of carrying that on and, yeah. and having those same traits with humans yeah. and kind of same, like same connection with humans yeah. that that mother has, that is something, um, tangible exactly. that can kind of indicate yeah. what the offspring might be like. And yes, don't meet one high content. And I think the whole start with a low and work your way up that works, but a low and a high are completely different. So exactly. If, yeah. If your end goal is to own a high content wolf dog, a low content wolf dog's useless Ex right. experience with that is great, but it's not going to give you really any indication. There might be a few little traits yeah. in there that you get I think it's a probably, window in, but it's probably a good litmus test though, because if you already ch are very challenged with a low content wolf dog, then don't expect right. owning a high content wolf dog yeah. to be any easier. It's going to be much, much harder. So yes. I think that's maybe, um, a reason to start with a low content, but yeah. I hear what you're saying where, yeah, comparing how you live with a low content wolf dog versus how you live with a high content wolf dog is totally different. Yeah. But if you already can't make it with a low content, you don't stand a chance with a but high. But if you're talking about like, it depends on the animals you're talking about too. Of course. Cause Rocky, when he was young, I think I used to mention on my tours, I tried to mention it every time. There is no way I could have owned him, had him in my home when he was a young animal. Right. There's no way. Yeah. He was destructive. He was a <laughs> not a compliant animal. Right. And I think that, you know, you got had if you started with a Rocky, <laughs> <laughs> then it that would be a pretty good test right. for what was coming. It depends on the animal, but yeah. I think in general, I hated when people were like, oh yeah, if you can manage a low, then you can work your way up. And you can, if you're going to do this over 15 years, most yeah. people aren't that patient yeah. and aren't going to, yeah. they want a high now. 
Exactly. Right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what was the biggest key to your success living with Rocky? <laughs> and I know, I mean, he was only with you for about six months, but still like what, what is it that, yeah, you figured out made your life with Rocky just the smoothest it could be? <laughs> yeah. Well, be I always considered him like ever since I think I met him. And two weeks later, I was like, can I take Rocky for walks? And you're like, well, he's kind of grumbly. If you want to, you can. I'm like, yeah, I want to. <laughs> and I think even from that point, moving all the way through our friendship, um, I think patience, like patience and reasonable expectations yeah period with I all of them that. i yeah. think that applies yeah i had having being patient shows i think kind of shows them okay like they're sort of invested in me and the, like we were touching on this doesn't it's not magic like with every single animal that you're patient and then they love you but it's for sure a, a stab and I think that's how he learned to trust me is yeah. that I would be really patient and I would, it might sound crazy, but it's not, I would ask him like, do you want pets today? And I could tell by the look on his face, yeah. he knew what I was saying and he would tell me. And yeah. some days he did not want pets. Some yeah. days he didn't want me to sit with him. Yeah. That is where you kind of check your ego. And if you want to build a true relationship with with a wolf dog, you have to check your ego at one point or another, Absolutely. Yep. hundred percent of the time. And I think that that was the key, like yeah. doing things at his pace, what he was comfortable with. And it's important to know just because you can walk in and a wolf, like especially higher contents and they want you to give them pets on their head that day. And they're really loving and want to be really close to you. That doesn't mean that, that it looks like that necessarily exactly. every day. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. and, and respecting that. Right? Well, of course. Yeah. And just kind of looping back to patience. What I have found is that by being patient with them, you give them the space that they need to be able to express themselves, mm -hmm. right? Because they need to kind of be able to go through their emotions and their decision-making and, and you kind of have to let them go through that. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like when you give them that space, they can kind of come out the other side and then see it your way a bit better yeah. too. Right. So I don't know if that makes sense, but it does, but I do want to note that I have never had to train a wolf dog right. <laughs> or have, have an, a wolf dog in my home from a puppy, like raise it all the way right. through all those really trying stages that they go through. Oh, the teenager phase. <laughs> I have done that, but in this setting, yeah. like with the piners, of yeah. course, like exactly. that was such a unique <laughs> And lovely gift. <laughs> yeah, nothing quite like a, no. a high content wolf dog going through puberty. So, yeah, so fun times. But that was for sure a lesson, but more for me. And I just want to note that I've never had to do that. Right. So, this is all coming from like a a staff point of view right. and not having that responsibility on right. me from the time yeah. they're two weeks old or three weeks old. Yeah. Okay. That's a very different story, which I it did is. not comment on. <laughs> well, I'm sure there will be a video all about that at some point. <laughs> um, um, hi Rip. Are you going to join us for the interview? I don't think we want you in this video, sweet pea. All right. So, okay. This is my favorite question that I want to ask you. So are there any valuable Hello. lessons that the wolf dogs have taught you in your time with them? And, uh, would, how would your life be different if you hadn't had those experiences with the wolf dogs? Wow. Yeah. Great question. <laughs> Definitely kind of opened my eyes and I feel like I've always been a pretty outdoor based person yeah. and being in the mountains and things like that. Um, it's just really kind of therapeutic. Yeah. But 
spending time with wolf dogs <laughs> that I have no problem saying our friends is a pretty special experience that just kind of fills you up. Even right. if you're not having a great day, it's, um, gives you so much. Yeah. And that I think changed for my life in that I, through working here and wanting to know more about wolves so that I always had like new information for tours and things like that and new perspectives too. Um, I learned so much about wild wolves in North America yeah. that was really disheartening <laughs> and shocking, frankly. Yeah. And because of yeah, wolves are beautiful. They're majestic. They're apex predators. Yeah. We all know that, but uh, most people don't know what's happening behind the scenes to wolves. And, um, I wanted to be a voice for wolves. So like I promised you said I would do that yeah. <laughs> and he gets updates every time I'm here, <laughs> but I want to be a voice for wolves and really try to make changes so that they at least have some protection. Um, they're treated very differently from other apex predators. And I think that's how it's changed my life so much. And now I have this passion for wild wolves yeah. that, um, that need people to speak up for them. Yeah. This happens really quiet. People have no idea yeah. um, what's actually going on. And they are heavily persecuted animals um, for absolutely zero. It's just completely unfounded. Yeah. And so that's why I've kind of gone in that direction to try to make actual change. And whether that's just um, really small steps at first. Um, yeah. that's how changes happen. Yeah. And so that's, I think what they've done to change, yeah. like the, f like friendships I've made with certain animals here yeah. <laughs> has totally changed my life. Like I, get butterflies when I'm like, Oh, I get to have a visit with Zeus today. I can't yeah. wait to see him. And right. that is amazing. Yeah. And not everyone can say they have yeah. a, a best friend. That's yeah. a wolf dog. Yeah. <laughs> so just so that I just want to kind of recap that. Cause I think you, I don't know. I think that was just a very impactful thing that you got to where the wolf dogs essentially, we're able to teach you truly how wonderful kind of the wolf behavior side of things are. Mm -hmm. And they kind of bridge that gap for you to give you that passion of really kind of, yeah. you know, your next big passion project, which is to speak up for wolves yeah. and, and yeah, kind of make your change there. Yeah. And sent me kind of directed me in that way. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's, that's beautiful. really what, what happened and that bond that you can form with these animals. Like people don't realize the depth of wolves and how emotionally intelligent they are. Oh yeah. People don't realize it yeah. and those, how compassionate and loyal and um, intelligent they are. Yeah. And that really, I think gets overlooked yeah. and their depth of feeling is in my opinion, rivals humans. And oh yeah. Humans could, if we, I think if we listen to wolves, what they're trying to teach us, um, it would make everyone a better human. I 100% agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Cause I get asked all the time, what would you do if you saw a wolf in the wild? Number one, cry yeah. and <laughs> enjoy that moment and be so happy that yeah. I got to experience that. Um, just knowing what it takes for them to survive. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And how innately beautiful they are inside. Yeah. Like people just don't, I don't think realize the, the, ability that they have to show compassion. And that's noted 
pretty often in Yellowstone. Yeah, like, do they kill rival <laughs> rival alphas and rival pack members? Yeah. Yes, but, but it's to at protect the same time, their family, it's out of love their for family their family is yeah. everything, yeah. and they would do anything to protect them. Yeah, and so nowhere else on earth are they observed like in Yellowstone. So we get all these amazing stories of their social behavior that every day blows away the biologists and yep. well, staff and even, there. You know, and when I hear you talking, I can't help that, you know, like connect to the experiences that I see here and stuff. And like, when I think about Kuna Zeus and Nova, right? Like they've been together for mm -hmm. over a decade and like just the sheer amount of love that they have for each other and respect and how just deeply bonded and, and loved they are by one another. And, yeah. you know, and, and even just these small things, how like Nova thinks that it's his responsibility to protect Kuna and Zeus. And mm -hmm. so, you know, he's the most territorial out of them and yeah. you know Zeus gets to kind of just sit back and relax because he knows that Nova is there to protect the family and just yeah. like all these little things right like it's that is for me like the thing that I love the most about yeah. just getting to watch the wolf dogs is those connections and just how intricate they those relationships are mm -hmm. like it's mind blowing to me and yeah. I love it it is. It's amazing. Like you could sit and watch them all oh, day. Yeah. yeah. It's they're, better than watching TV. They're fascinating. <laughs> and like, so what are three key words you associate with wolf dogs or wolf dog ownership? Three words, not sentences, three words. Right. With wolf dog ownership. Yeah. Or wolf dogs. Yeah. As a whole. Um, that's hard. I know. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Challenging. Yep. The best. Yeah. All right. No, that's great. Okay. I think, yeah, like, I think they just, yeah. Yeah. Make no, you, that's make great. Make you better. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, I mean, unless there's anything else that you want to share with the wonderful people that are going to watch this video. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you don't have anything else you want to share, we'll wrap things up. But if no. there's anything else that you want to throw out there, well, no, not no. really. Like I, we covered a good amount. I think, I think so. And just like, you know, you might have to cut this <laughs> Yeah. The total gratitude I have for you. Oh, and you're going to make me cry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, for making my relationship with Rocky what it was. You were oh so generous. And yes, like he was less likely to bite me and stuff, I guess, but I got to handle him in like some pretty cool situations. Yeah. And um, you always trusted my judgment with him, even though he was grumbly. Like when he first came here, he was kind of a jerk. Yeah. He was a grumbly jerk. And when he first came here, he, um, didn't elicit immediate trust, <laughs> but for some reason I'm like, can I take him for walks? Can I? And you totally trusted my judgment with him. And I appreciate that so much. Well, a, you're welcome. But B, <laughs> you made it easy because you are one of those people that has just an amazing ability to listen to exactly what the animals are telling you, you know, like you didn't input your filter of ego or whatever. Like I trusted your judgment and I, I, yeah. that was an easy decision for me. Right. And so, yeah. yeah. And then secondly, <laughs> you don't have to thank me for <laughs> any of that. Like I am so grateful <laughs> to you for, you know, a building that relationship with Rocky and letting him have that mm -hmm. just, I think finally that love that he yeah. always needed in his life. And, and yeah, the fact that you were willing to adopt him and take him home and kind of give him those last six months of like yeah. paradise. I mean, I think honestly that made his life and yeah. without that, like his, I mean, you, I think had the greatest impact 
on Rocky's life. Mm -hmm. And I think you were able to give him exactly what he needed from this life in order to yeah. move on and go to the next. Right. Yeah. So. And I feel, I feel that too. Yeah. And it just, you know, played out in like going back to the other question. Like, I think it played out exactly how it was meant to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he had those nice six months and yeah. we gave each other everything. Yeah. So he, he was happy. He was pretty he was. content and the pacing. Yeah. You, I mean, you have to expect that with yeah. some of some animals and maybe not all of them, but he definitely was a pacer and, and that was okay because in the moments when he was calm laying in front yeah. of the fireplace he'd every now and then just look over and make eye contact with me I'm like oh, that's all I need like yeah your expectation mine at least are were like this low yeah and it's like anything because people used to say oh he must love you so much and I'd be honest and I'd say I love him with all my heart he tolerates me like but I know that he loved you but his, there, but his ability how... to express mm -hmm. love was very different and that he was very yeah. bonded to you yes but it doesn't it's not like owning a dog no. right it's no it isn't that I think is um is something that I would like to speak to is yeah. when you have a dog yeah, you feel great. You love that dog because they love you. Yeah. And you come home and they're like, oh my God. Yeah, he would run to the door. He'd cry when I yeah. got home. That was like everything to me. Yeah. But with dogs, we are used to having like so much return. Yeah. Um, with dogs, it's like, it's an <laughs> expectation. Like that yeah. relationship is easy. It's natural. And yeah. And, but yeah, when it comes to wolf dogs is when you get those little moments yeah. where they do show you their love and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like that is just that, so special. Lit that, just that look or he just presses, you know, when they yeah. press their forehead into you and it's just yeah. everything. And it's yeah. like, that's all I need. And that, that respect for them, I think, um, makes the relationship so much deeper. Yeah, I and agree. I know like anyone that loses a dog knows, um, that it's so devastating, but when wolf dogs are a whole different level of devastating yeah. as yeah. you know yeah and it's something that you you never get over losing a dog but sometimes it's just like they're so heavy with you all the yeah. time yeah and i think that that's kind of the price that you pay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and like, as I mean, we were talking about this before the interview, but you know, like Kuhn and Zeus are getting older and like, I mean, if I'm being totally honest, I think I probably cry about it at least once a week because yeah. you know, it's, it's getting to the end of their lives and you just, you have to really appreciate every moment that yeah. you have with them because yeah, I know that they're not going to be around forever. And for me, like, they're just such a big part of my life. Yeah. It's so they're just so huge and they fill up like parts of your life. That well, and I was going to say they, in a way they become your identity and then yeah. when they're gone, Oh yeah. It leaves just, I mean, a gap that's never going to get filled again. Right. You manage yeah. it. That. And yeah. I think that, what maybe people don't talk about a lot is like how it change, it affects you personally is I kind of relate it to horses okay. a lot because they're so, um, so emotionally intelligent, yeah. but it's kind of with wolf dogs, it's, you can't lie to them. Like no. you can't uh, be <laughs> in denial about who you are that yeah. day or at that moment they and reflect back yeah they reflect <laughs> back what you're putting out because I I have yeah. it all the time like you know there there's a day that I'm really stressed out and I'm you know feeling heavy and whatever those wolf dogs behave differently than mm -hmm. the days that you know like I'm open and carefree and all that kind of I mean yeah. they reflect it back 100 percent. yeah and I think that's why like dogs do that to a degree but it's not the same. It's not the same. And you, you can't 
Um, you have to be really honest with yourself yep. about yourself at moments. And I think that sometimes they, it's hard yeah. and, yeah. and like there'd be moments where I kind of resented it, yeah. <laughs> but because you feel it, that you're, you know, faking how you feel that day or trying to hide something that you're feeling that day and they pick up on it right mm -hmm. away and yeah. they make you more honest as a, yeah. as a person. <laughs> well, I and find. totally. And like, they make you a check yourself, but B like they, they make you more self-aware, right? They because there's times that I know for me, like there's times that I don't realize that something is weighing on me or I'm, I'm feeling a certain energy or whatever, that they can show that to me. Yes. Right. And it's, yeah, it's super and interesting. Certain animals are so like, obviously the animals you're closest to are really good at that. Rocky was good at that. Zeus is really good at yeah. that. And it kind of is and on the like full spectrum of how you could be feeling. And if you were, if I was really frustrated about something with like one of my kids or something. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd be so mad about it and I'd walk in and Zeus would just look at me and walk away from me. Yeah. If it was like, no, like you can't bring that in here. He would just look at me and not want to be near me. And yeah. then I'd be like, why is yeah. he? And then it would take yeah. a few minutes of walking around. I'd be like, Oh yeah. And then I go, Oh in my gosh. I, yeah. so rel <laughs> I, I feel that. Cause and yeah, it's, I relate. It's the same if you're, kind of feeling sad about something they know that if they know all the emotions yeah, and if you're do. sad and having a really bad day I'd go in and he would literally wrap his butt would be here and his head would be here yeah. and he'd literally wrap himself around me yeah not on a day that I were mad about something yeah but on a day where I was sad yeah it, you think that it's the same, like I mean, they're the same, but, yeah, it's but not. they're attracted to just totally different energies, right? Mm -hmm. They're attracted to certain energies and then they're repelled by certain energies. And, yeah. and yeah, and that's like, how no, I won't tolerate that today. I yeah. don't need to be around that. And exactly. they're just like, yeah. so pure yeah. and beautiful. Right. Yeah. And humans need more of that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think that is a beautiful place to wrap things up. Yeah. Angie, thank you so much for sitting down with me thank and you for having kind me. of going through this. And I mean, I'm sure that I'm going to have you back again and I'm sure <laughs> that I'm going to be picking your brain a lot about, yeah. you know, wolves and kind of sharing some of that information with yeah. people as well. So I love any excuse to talk about Rocky. So <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Okay. Well, Angie, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Ripper, I'm sorry. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video um, and this interview with Angie to hear a little bit more about Rocky and really what it took for her to be a wolf dog owner. Um, if you guys like this video, make sure that you guys subscribe to the channel. Please like this video. If you guys have any comments, please let us know. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. And if you guys want to find out anything else about wolf dog ownership or just want me to cover different topics, let me know in the comments below and I'm happy to do that. Uh -huh.